Hi, and welcome back to DIY Book. This is not the beginning of the third section yet. I promise you that is coming, the part where I show you how to make your work available for other people to buy. Um, in the meantime, though, I just wanted to show you some stuff that I've been tinkering with, and to go back to the discussion about perfect lining methods, techniques, because uh, at the time I showed you some machines that I had, or contraptions that people had made for perfect lining, hand binding presses, and sort of a wooden automated thing. And these are really good products, and the, the guys who make them are super guys, give a lot of support, give lots of instruction about how to use them, but they do cost about 100 bucks US each, which isn't that much in terms of creating your own uh, micropress at home. Uh, there are far more expensive things available. But um, this may not be the situation you're in, where you can spend $100, and then if you're like me and in the UK, you have to spend about the same amount again to have them shipped to you. And also just, it's the DIY spirit that you tinker and refine and I'm forever working on my process. And I've come up with something very simple that most people should be able to do themselves. And it gives you a lot of control over how you bind the book. So I'll show you, uh, this is what I've been working on, which is just a very simple little press. Um, it's just two pieces of wood. Uh, Sorry, there's some noise there. Two pieces of wood and some screws and wing nuts to hold it together. Washers just to protect the wood a little bit. And inside, I've put some metal strips. And that's just so that the glue doesn't adhere the book to the wood. Um, it keeps some distance between the, the surface that you're gluing and the, uh, the contraption itself. So let me show you this in practice. Here's a close-up of this thing that I've made. And inside, um, you'll see I've also put little bits of cardboard behind these strips of metal, just so that um, there isn't an imprint made when you squeeze this all together on the pages. So it keeps the pressure fairly even across the whole page. For the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to make a little notebook um, I've chopped these pages, I used a little deckle edge cutter to give them a fancy edge, and I've got a piece of paper that I'm confident won't be big enough to wrap around them. So what I'm going to do is take one of these sheets and make a little mark so I know this will be wide enough, and then take all of the pages and from that mark Make a second line where the width of the spine will go. And then I'm going to crease these using a bone folder. You can use anything that just doesn't have a, a fully sharp edge on it, just to score the page. And a uh, kind of thing I worked out a while ago is if you want to make sure that you've got a perpendicular line, you just square the end of the ruler with the edge of your page. So make one mark there. Then a second, and then this is all ready to go into the press. So I'll just sort of pre crease that there. There's one, and then that's for the spine. And now these, hopefully, very smoothly. Go into the press. So open it up. It's in there. And then put the cover in along with. It. And then I can jog all this together and you'll see how the metal keeps that lined up. Now initially what I did uh, was build this thing. This is kind of a Noah's Ark little dealio so that I could have even more space so that I absolutely no, there will be no glue on 
the edge of this. So I'm going to use this to kind of jog these pages all flat. And this was a thing that I had with some of the other presses was he couldn't get right in and juggle the pages around the way he liked them. So this, because it's it's so basic, I can reach right in and put the pages exactly where I want them. I'm not kind of lost once they get inside the machine. So I'll tighten this up. I'm sorry that my hand's in the way. Now, I don't have proper tools or woodworking skills at all. I made this with um, some long strips of molding that I bought from the hardware store and uh, my Dremel tool, which doesn't even have proper uh, drilling tools. I, I used a very thin thing and kind of bored out holes. And then uh, to make a second one of these, I got, uh, you know, one of, one of these, a hand screwdriver and uh, just some spare bits of that. You could even just use two rulers like this and some screws if they've got the sort of uh, ring binder holes in them already, or even just elastic bands to hold the two rulers together. Um, but, you know, I'm doing this often enough that I wanted to make something I could really get to work exactly the way I wanted. So tighten that down. So now I've got these pages exactly where I want them, so I can glue them. And I've got this contraption here so that you know I can I can put it aside. Um, what I was doing was using a hot glue gun to use, to make my spines, but I found if you go too close to the edge, the glue kind of oozes out and it creates a sort of blob there. But if I was too cautious and didn't get near enough to the edge, these trailing pages would sometimes be loose. So what I'm doing now is doing it in two stages, using just white glue for a first pass to glue the pages together, but leaving the spine alone, the cover alone, and then using hot glue, and then going in and kind of smashing this down on the desk, well, gently smashing, so that it's nice and flat. So I'm gonna do that now. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm just going to skip right ahead to the hot glue because uh, otherwise I have to wait for it to dry. Right, so here we go with the scariness that is hot glue. So, I'll just put globs of this in here. Try and cover the whole area. Put a line there just to make sure. I'm going to take this off like that. And then wait for it to cool down. Now I've got a little book to use for groceries or notes or whatnot. And of course you can use that to make paperback books as well. So I hope that was halfway useful and that you're all inspired now to go out and build your own press or publish whatever you want, however you can possibly do it. And I'll see you back here next time when we'll go into the third part of the DIY book process, which is where you take this book that you finished and you make it available so that other people can find out about it and buy it and read it and enjoy it. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.